Hello, framologists. It's me, Andrew Davis. I am the founder of PreziBasics.com, and I'm a framologist myself. Framology is the art, science, and skills required to master Prezi. And what I've decided to do over the next 10 weeks is answer the 10 most frequently asked questions about Prezi. So we're going to start with uh, question number one right now. Prezi question number one, the most frequently asked Prezi, Prezi question is how do I control Prezi's zoom, pan, and rotation speed and intensity? Uh, I just realized there's a spelling mistake and intensity. We're going to fix that because uh, this is this is it, uh, this is all about uh, fixing your prezies. So uh, let's just fix this really quickly. There we go, and I'm going to make that wider. All right, that's that's going to work. So. So Prezi question number one, how do you control Prezi's pan speed and intensity? Well, the, the people at uh, Prezi are really smart people. They've come up with a genius formula that actually changes based on where it is on the, on the, on the stage, uh, you know, exactly how it's going to move and how fast it's going to get there and how far the zoom is and what rotation velocity is. And the formula looks something like this. I should point out right now that this is not the real formula. I just found a formula online and put it in my Prezi presentation. But <laughs> but the key is that they've they've really worked on this and and it's changed actually since 2009 when I first started using it the the speed and, and velocity and intensity of the zooming and panning and rotation has changed and there are no zoom pan rotate speed control so there's no place you're not missing it there's no tool in in Prezi where you can change the speed for a specific path now this this presentation assumes that you already know how to path we're not going to go into that today uh, but if if you know if you need that question answered please let me know. So the two most common Prezi, you know, criticisms are actually number one, it makes people dizzy, and you can even see with that rotation there, it's not a great rotation. Uh, you know, it does move uh, nicely, I would say, uh, but number one, people say Prezi sucks because it makes them dizzy, and number two is that zooming, panning, and rotating is just a novelty. And I don't think they're wrong. Most of the Prezi presentations that I've seen are, uh, you know, are, are are leveraging these two problems. I mean, they're they're exacerbating them. So if if we're making people dizzy, it's not the tool, it's just the way we're using the tool. And if they think it's a novelty, we're not enhancing the presentation by actually using Prezi in a way that actually enhances it. So here's my motto for the day. Don't be a fool. Don't let them blame the tool. That's my Mr. T quote for the day. I love Mr. T and the A-team. So don't be a fool. Don't let them blame the tool. We, we've got to do a better job of using the tool in more uh, intelligent ways that actually take advantage of this. So this is a uh, really easy to fix and that's the good news so mr t you can calm down don't panic uh it's a really easy fix and in fact the fix is a little bit of science okay so this is my bill nye the science guy science time you can skip this if you hate science but you should stay because frame of reference is a really simple concept and the science behind this is that you need a frame of reference uh, in prezi to really stop people from getting dizzy and stop them feeling like it's a novelty tool and a frame of reference this is the definition you know just a geometric axis in relation to the movement of size position rotation motion and you know these x and y axis here uh, is essentially what we've got to work with. We can move sideways on the x-axis, we can move up and down, and we can move deeper and, and uh, zoom. We can also rotate within any of those planes. So we've got to actually help people find a frame of reference. So let's translate this out of science into the Bill Nye guy you know, world. Now here's the problem. If I'm going to actually move from here to here, there's no frame of reference. You don't know where to here is in the context of the whole stage. And the more you do this, the more dizzy, quote unquote, people get. The more they feel like you're just zooming to zoom without a need to zoom. If you move from here to here, you're doing the same exact thing. So there's no frame of reference. And your mind actually can't translate the motion relative to the things it's already seen. Now, Pre Prezi, the, the genius of this tool is that it's an infinite landscape. It goes on forever. It goes very, very deep. It goes very, very wide. It goes as far right and far left as you want it to go. It spins as much as you want it to spin. But that means there is no native frame of reference. And we have to actually supply one so that people don't get dizzy. And you can move very, very fast and not 
not get people dizzy if you're using a frame of reference. So the, the answer to the question in short is that if you want to control Prezi zoom, pan, and speed and intensity, we've actually got to focus on the frame of reference key and that'll stop people from getting dizzy. So let me show you, there are two ways to actually create frames of reference very simply in your Prezi presentations. Number one is you've got to overlap elements, okay? Overlapping elements provides an inherent frame of reference. So if I zoom in to Bill Nye the Science Guy, you can see that I already uh, saw a little bit of Mr. T there and that overlap. See him right by the corner there, that TPL Drew, you see his shoulder? That provides a frame of reference. So I already know where I'm moving. Or like this, if I'm going to a frame, you can still see Mr. T there, but you know where I moved from, from Mr. T to the this. And you saw the end of the this uh, in that move. Uh, even if you're gonna zoom out, you can do it like that, right? You knew where that move came from. There was a frame of reference and it put the motion in context. No matter how big the move is, you can actually do this. Your brain processes these motions very easily and that's the key to actually creating a great Prezi. So the rule of thumb for overlapping elements and making this work is, is just thinking about this. Make sure you can actually see the element you're moving to before the move starts. Now, this is a rule of thumb. This is something that's supposed to help you with this. So you, you, what I want you to try to think about when you're creating your Prezi presentations is little overlaps. It can be a slight rotation overlap. It can be a zoom overlap. But overlap the elements in a way that helps you actually see those moves happen. And the second way to do that is actually use establishing shots. Now, I do this very frequently, but it helps create a frame of reference inherently. An establishing shot is actually a television or a film uh, term. And this is the definition of an establishing shot. In filmmaking and in TV production, it sets up or establishes the context for a scene by showing the relationship between its important figures and objects. And this is an establishing shot, right? Which is exactly what a frame of reference is. This is showing you that we're in Manhattan and that establishes the next scene you're going to see. So if you're watching a sitcom at night, if you're watching a movie that starts uh, you know, in New York, uh, you know, Friends, uh, you might start with the, the exterior shot of, of New York and then you're gonna zoom into the interior of a New York City apartment in the daytime and you know where this par apartment is. That establishing shot helps make the zoom make sense, okay? And you, and you, you gather a lot from that. Your mind uh, understands that move. So we're gonna leverage the same concept. So this is your establishing shot if you're thinking in Prezi terms. It's zoomed out and I can see all the pieces of that I'm going to zoom into. So this is, um, this is analogous to your skyline of New York. Then we're going to go into an interior apartment which might be uh, you know, a, an, an idea that you might go into further but you've got to come back out to your establishing shot. You might go into an interior of your coffee shop next or the interior of a gym and then you're going to, before you move on, you're going to reestablish that frame of reference and show me the skyline of New York City again. And then you'll move on to the skyline of Amsterdam, let's say. I was just in Amsterdam, that's top of mind. So you're gonna establish a new shot, then we're gonna go into a series of interiors, like the coffee shop, the apartment, or the gym. And you can see those elements are overlapping. It provides a frame of reference, and we're gonna reestablish the frame of reference before we move on. And I'm gonna do that again here. You can see that that's the second point, using establishing shots. This helps reinforce the points you're making in Prezi as well. So the two ways to create frames in Prezi, uh, uh, re, you know, reference frames and frames of reference in Prezi is to overlap elements and use establishing shots. And I've got a big tip here. Do not be afraid of using lots of moves. Do not be afraid of lots of, of path numbers in your Prezi presentation. For example, if you have a 10 point PowerPoint slide, a ten, 10 slides in your PowerPoint presentation, don't be afraid if it ends up having 30 moves or 30 paths or 40 paths. That's okay. You're actually helping the brain register every one of those moves so that there's a cohesive motion because it's not the speed or the intensity of the move that makes people dizzy. It's the missing frame of reference. And as long as we provide them with one, we can actually solve this problem. So let's do a little exercise here. When I was uh, showing you this, this first piece, I said there were two most common Prezi criticisms and you can see that number one and you can see number two. Let's fix these so that there isn't a, a frame of reference problem. Let's try to make this a little bit better of a move. Now, if I was creating this on my own, I might, uh, I, I don't like a, a too big of a spin. So I might move that like that and I might even overlap it, uh, you know, something like that if I wanted. Uh, and this one, this second piece, I'm gonna shift, click and drag, which we'll talk about another time. Uh, I might move this one to even inside my number one. How's that? And now I've got 
an establishing shot. I've got overlapping elements. I'm even going to make this one a little bigger. Uh, and I'm going to put them over here. And now let's just make sure our paths are right. So I'm going to go 7, 8, uh, then 9. And then I'm going to remember I've got to reestablish the shot before it goes to 10, which I don't see. So let's just test it. Two most common Prezi criticisms are that it makes people dizzy, number one, and that the zooming, panning, and rotation is just a novelty. And you can see I didn't reestablish it, right? I didn't reestablish it. So I've got to reestablish that move before it goes to number 10. And the reason I didn't see number 10 is it's over here. So let's, let's actually add a path before number 10 to reestablish uh, my location. And then I should do it again before it goes to number 11 uh, and, and uh, do it here. And then I should also overlap this element, and that's going to make everything a little bit better. So let's let's play this out again. So the two common most Prezi uh, most common Prezi criticisms is number one that it makes people dizzy, and number two that the zooming, panning, and rotation is just a novelty. So those are the two things, and there are common criticisms. And you can see that that overlapping element sh provided me with a nice move between the two common problems and the solution. And you can see the overlap just very barely on the corner there, right? But those motions, those little overlaps help tremendously. Now this one's going to seem a little bit off because I don't see the overlap. So, you know, tightening those things up is going to make a big difference. And if you, the presenter, focus on the elements in the center of the frame, the audience will too. You're not giving anything away. So that's the way you want to think. Uh, so that's, that's the concept um, overall. So let's just... Um, Let's take a look at the, the big big arc here. The Prezi question was, how do I control Prezi's zoom, pan, speed, and intensity? The answer is there's no control. And I really want you to think uh, about those main elements uh, that we talked about. So I want you to overlap elements. I want you to use establishing shots. Don't be afraid of lots of paths. Those are going to make your key pieces of, of uh, using Prezi really effective. So this is another great episode, I hope, of Framology, the art, science, and skills required to master Prezi. Uh, you can find more at Prezi Basics, and you can sign up for Framology, which is my new class uh, coming out this year uh, at PreziBasics.com. And if you want the other 10 tips, I'll uh, email those to you if you sign up for fr Framology there. So thanks so much. I'm Andrew Davis, and I hope you've had another great time learning the art, science, and skills required to master Prezi.